Well, I think the, uh, with the growth of a new variant, um, limited understanding as yet as to how, it, uh, how lethal it is and how, how much it leads to hospitalisation, but a very clear understanding that it's spreading rapidly and therefore this is proportionate and probably precautionary. doesn't mean we have any uh, confidence in the handling of this by the government. I mean, for example, I find it extraordinary. They're appealing for people to help with vaccines. Surely they should have had a register already set up and have already emailed people and, pho and phoned them round and got them working. Bits of government just don't seem to be connecting together. In saying that, John, lots of people are suggesting that rather than being cautious or cautious in all of this, we're actually panicking and that we don't really know very much. South Africa doesn't seem to be panicking. and It's where the, the virus started. And that you're having an impact not just on livelihoods, like with bars and restaurants saying takings are done, but also on causing loads of uncertainty about people's plans around Christmas. See, I think and that's unfair. But I think it's quite the reverse, you see. I think with having a vaccine pass, and I've been arguing this from since February, much better than the lockdowns we had, which really did put the future of venues at risk, and you're starting to see them closing because now they're afraid they're going to be closed down again. I'd much rather that people were able to go in there with their, vac with their pass and be able, therefore, be able, therefore, to keep those industries and those jobs going. That's the point about it. But, but where's the sign that vaccine passports work? Look at Scotland, look at Wales, Northern Ireland. They've in times had higher infection rates than we've had in England. They've had got vaccine passports. The same is tr true in Germany and Austria and elsewhere. There's no evidence that it actually brings down infection rates. I think there's, it's quite clear. Would you rather be in a bar where people were unvaccinated? And of course, they're putting themselves at risk as well and overloading the health system. But Peter Bowen's just been seeing he's double jabbed and, already, and he caught it. Yeah. The fact is, a solution will not be 100% effective. What this is is about risk management. And the problem is, with the government and with uh, some of those who've been arguing for lockdown all the, all the time, is it's complete risk avoidance rather than risk management. And basically, that's what I was saying yesterday in the House of Commons. That's where we've got to get. Because we will be going through variant after variant, probably for decades to come. And therefore, a bit like flu. We've got to learn to manage it, and therefore, if we can have precautionary measures, like mask wearing in, uh, in, in public places, like uh, passes, like ensuring that people get their booster jabs, those are the way of managing our way, our, our way through this, rather than, frankly, some of the hysterical responses. You know, we've got MPs comparing this to Nazi Germany. Give me a break. And, you know, we get it, and this is feeding through to some of the, ele some of the electorate, Whereas I think most people will be very pleased that they will still be able to go out and enjoy themselves, but knowing they're going to be a bit safer. Let's look at travel if we can briefly. There is much speculation the government potentially might get rid of hotel <coughs> mandatory, mandatory <coughs> hotel rooms. Sh shouldn't we just go back to normal when it comes to travel, as in the normal we had a couple of weeks ago? We know the infection is spreading here exponentially. <coughs> it makes little difference. And it might mean that actually people get away to see loved ones at Christmas. Well, I think they all, these always ought to be uh, ought, ought to be reviewed and again and, and again managed properly. You see, you mentioned travel. Millions of people have been travelling, and we've all been showing our, our vaccine passes at the airport. Nobody seems to have uh, been too inconvenienced by that, and nobody seems to have been traumatised by. It. That's why I'm saying everybody should calm down a bit and actually get a sense of proportion. Did you at all understand? I, I, we we get we're in the middle of a pandemic. Do you at all understand the libertarian argument about constantly now at different points, whether it's to vote, and I think your your party mm. opposes that, mm. whether it's to get into football stadiums, that uh, there is the potential for the government now to. to You'd follow us around a lot more, to know where we are, to have to prove who you are. And, and, and for many, that's a big overreach of governments. How does showing a paper pass like that to get into somewhere tell the government where I am? And well, people, it, it, people should actually get a It set, is a pretty a big... Set, and you but talked is, about voter ID. Yeah. Voter ID is designed, as we know from Donald Trump's uh, people in the United States, to actually prevent people voting actually prevent them participating. What I'm arguing is vaccine passes are to enable people to participate, by to enable you, activity. By providing essentially some of your medical history. But what you're saying to people is, yes, I've had this uh, vaccine pass, therefore, when I'm in here, we'll be reducing the risk of, uh, of actually transmitting the virus and getting it exponentially to a stage where it could possibly overwhelm the, uh, the health service. Now, whether they've... Uh, 
put in enough capacity in the health service over these years as they've been shutting hospital beds and actually slashing nursing training in my, in, in my area in the past. That's another issue, but that, we can't resolve that today. Therefore, what they need to do is to, is to look at something that proportionally manages us through this, and that's why I'm asking everybody, calm down, treat this as a bit, a bit of business, a business management, and let's work our way through it. And just very finally, John, while I've got you, Shropshire on Thursday, should the Labour Party have stood aside to, to let the Lib Dems put up a proper fight against the Conservative Definitely not. We, we actually You're not going to win that, We you? have come second there in the last year. The Lib Dems have veered between being third and fourth, and fourth there. Not only that, their candidate seems to spend most of her time apologising for past tweets. Our candidate is a first-class young man, actually born and bred in, Os in Oswestry, right in the heart of the constituency. When I was up there, he was getting a good response on the doorstep, and I look forward to that being repeated again on Thursday when I'm going to be up there campaigning for him. Wow.